I remember that day like it was just yesterday. It was one of those rare days off where I decided to take matters into my own hands and clean the house. My parents' old place was more than just a house to me, it was a sanctuary filled with memories. After they passed, I kept everything the same, living a life they would have been proud of, simple, modest, and grounded, despite the wealth they left behind. So, there I was, knee-deep in dust and nostalgia, wearing the most unflattering outfit you could imagine, an old tee and faded jeans, hair tied up in a makeshift bun, with gloves that had seen better days. The sun was setting, and my stomach was rumbling, reminding me I had skipped lunch in my cleaning frenzy. Deciding to treat myself, I picked up my phone and dialed the local pizzeria. Yeah, hi, I'd like to order a large pepperoni with extra cheese, please. How soon can you get it here? I asked, hoping it wouldn't take too long. The voice on the other end assured me it'd be no more than 30 minutes. True to their word, the doorbell rang, and I rushed to answer it, eager for my cheesy reward. Standing on the doorstep was a young man, probably in his mid-twenties, with a warm smile and a pizza box in hand. Evening, ma'am. Pizza delivery. He said, his eyes scanning the grandeur of the foyer behind me. Thanks. Just put it here. I gestured to the console table near the door, fishing for my wallet. As I handed him the cash, our eyes met, and an awkward yet friendly silence fell between us. He broke the ice first. You work here long? This place is massive, he asked, curiosity lighting up his eyes. I couldn't help but smile at the assumption. Something like that. I played along, not ready to reveal the whole truth. Owners are quite the characters, you know? Yeah? They must be loaded to live in a place like this. Must be nice, huh? He chuckled, shifting the pizza box under his arm. Suppose so. I replied, leaning against the doorframe. They're not home much. Always traveling, or caught up in work. He nodded, understandingly. Sounds lonely. You get to hang around in all this luxury, though. Not a bad deal, eh? I laughed, a genuine, hearty laugh. Guess you could say that. Beats the hustle outside. We chatted for a few more minutes, him asking about the owners, and me spinning tales that were half true. There was something about this guy, a sincerity mixed with curiosity, that made me want to keep talking. Hey, if you're not busy, maybe you'd like to grab a coffee sometime? You know, when you're not working, he ventured, a hopeful look in his eyes. I hesitated, not because I didn't want to, but because I knew this little game of pretend couldn't last forever. Sure, why not? Could use a friend around here, I found myself saying, surprising even me. Great. I'm Alex, by the way. He extended his hand, which I shook, feeling the warmth of his grasp. Emma, I introduced myself, deciding to stick to at least one truth tonight. After that first unexpected meeting with Alex, things started to pick up speed faster than I could have imagined. Our first coffee date turned into a series of meetups, each one more interesting than the last. It wasn't long before I found myself looking forward to our time together, enjoying the simplicity and authenticity of our conversations. It was a refreshing change from the usual circles I found myself in. One evening, as we were walking through the park after grabbing a bite from a food truck, Alex turned to me, his expression curious. Emma, you ever think about what it's like, living a life without all this? He gestured around, implying the modest surroundings compared to the grandeur of my home. I shrugged, keeping my response light. Sometimes, I guess. But it's not the place that makes the life, you know? It's the people, the experiences. He nodded, looking thoughtful. Yeah, I get that. Just seems like a different world from mine, is all. As days turned into weeks, our casual outings started to feel like something more. Alex was different, he didn't put on airs or try to impress with grand gestures. He was just himself, and that made me feel comfortable being me, or at least, the version of me I had presented to him. One night, we found ourselves at a local dive bar, the kind of place I'd never stepped foot in before meeting him. The atmosphere was lively, filled with the buzz of conversation and laughter. We squeezed into a booth, the dim lighting casting shadows over our table. 
So, Emma. Alex started, a playful edge to his voice. Ever think about ditching the fancy life and running away to a cabin in the woods? Just you, me, and nature? I laughed, the idea so far from my reality, but oddly appealing. Run away to a cabin, huh? And leave all my responsibilities behind? Tempting, but I think I'd miss the chaos of my life. He leaned in, his gaze intense. I'm serious. You ever just want to get away from it all? No expectations, no pressures? I met his gaze, feeling a surge of honesty. Yeah, I do. More often than you'd think. Sometimes I wonder what my life would have been like if things were different, simpler. Alex reached across the table, taking my hand in his. Emma, whatever life you've got waiting for you out there, I want you to know I'm here for you. Doesn't matter if it's a mansion or a cabin in the woods. I like you for you. It had been a few months since Alex and I started seeing each other. Our relationship, built on a foundation of supposed simplicity and modest living, was about to face its first real test. I had danced around the truth of my identity for too long, and the weight of the lie was becoming unbearable. It was time to come clean, to reveal the world I actually came from. But how do you tell someone you've been lying to them about who you are since the day you met? I decided to invite Alex over for dinner at my place, well, the mansion that he thought belonged to my employers. It was the setting of our first encounter and, in my mind, the fitting place for my confession. As I prepared dinner, my thoughts raced. How would Alex react? Would he see me as a liar, or would he understand why I did it? The doorbell rang, snapping me out of my reverie. It was showtime. Hey, Alex. Come on in. I greeted him, trying to sound as normal as possible. Wow, your bosses must really trust you to have you host dinner in their mansion. Alex joked as he stepped inside, looking around. I chuckled nervously. Yeah, about that. Why don't we sit down? Dinner's almost ready. We made small talk as we settled at the dining table, the elaborate spread in front of us a stark contrast to our usual low-key dates. Alex seemed to sense something was off, his usual cheerful demeanor replaced with a look of concern. Emma, what's going on? You've been acting weird all evening, Alex finally said, setting down his fork. Taking a deep breath, I decided it was now or never. Alex, there's something I need to tell you. Something important. He leaned in, attentive. Okay, shoot. The truth is, I began, my heart pounding. This house, it's, it's mine. And not just the house. The business I told you I work at? It's actually my company. I inherited it from my parents. For a moment, there was silence. Alex's expression was unreadable, a mixture of surprise, confusion, and something else I couldn't quite place. You mean, you're, you're rich? He finally said, his voice a mix of disbelief and curiosity. Yeah, I am. And I'm so sorry I didn't tell you sooner. I just, I wanted to keep things simple. I wanted someone to like me for me, not my money. I explained, bracing myself for his reaction. Alex sat back, processing the news. Wow. That's, a lot to take in. So, every time we talked about your bosses, you were actually talking about yourself? I nodded, feeling a lump form in my throat. Yes. And I understand if you're mad or if you want to leave. I just couldn't keep lying to you. There was a long pause, during which I could almost hear my heart beating. Then, Alex reached across the table, taking my hand in his. Emma, I won't lie and say I'm not shocked. But I'm not mad. I get why you did it. This world is full of people who would kill to be in your shoes, not for the responsibility, but for the perks. You wanted to avoid that, to find something real. I respect that, he said, his gaze sincere. I felt a wave of relief wash over me, mixed with a twinge of guilt, forever doubting him. Really? You're not upset? Alex shook his head. No. I like you, Emma. Not your money, not your mansion. You. This doesn't change how I feel. His words were like a bomb to my frayed nerves. 
The fear of rejection, of judgment, melted away, leaving a sense of hope and newfound trust between us. Thank you, Alex. That means everything to me, I said, feeling a weight lift off my shoulders. We spent the rest of the evening talking openly about my life, my family, and the business. I shared stories I had never told anyone, feeling a connection to Alex that went deeper than before. After I let Alex into the real world of my wealth, things took a turn I didn't expect. He was all in, more than I ever dreamed. One evening, out of the blue, he dropped the question that would change everything. Marry me, Emma, he said, his eyes shining with something fierce. Let's do it big, in some jaw-dropping place. Then jet off somewhere, just you and me. The idea set my heart racing. A family with Alex, something real and mine, was all I ever wanted. But his vision of grandeur threw me. Alex, I love the thought of us, a future. I started, trying to keep my voice steady. But why all the flash? Can't we discover each other without splashing out? He didn't take it well. The look on his face was like I slapped him. What, my idea's not good enough, he shot back, a sharp edge in his voice. No, it's not that. I hurried to explain. It's just, I thought, maybe we could keep it simple, focus on us. He scoffed, shaking his head. Simple. Right. You're probably just too embarrassed to waste your cash on someone like me. That stung. Alex, stop. It's not about the money. I thought you knew that. He didn't say anything for a moment, just stared at me like he was seeing me for the first time. Then, without another word, he walked out. He ghosted me for days after that, leaving me to stew in worry and doubt. Had I hurt him that bad? Was I wrong? I couldn't stand the silence and uncertainty. I picked up the phone and dialed his number, my heart pounding in my chest. Alex? I said when he finally answered, my voice barely above a whisper. Emma, he replied, his voice cold, distant. I'm sorry, I blurted out, the words tumbling out in a rush. If the wedding you want is what you need, we can talk about it. I just, I miss you. There was a pause, long enough for my heart to sink. Then, slowly, he spoke. I miss you too. Maybe I pushed too hard. It's just, being with you, it's all so new to me. I got carried away. Relief washed over me, warm and soothing. It's okay, Alex. We're in this together, right? Let's figure it out, find a middle ground. Yeah, he said, a hint of the old warmth returning to his voice. Together. We met up the next day, talked for hours about what we both envisioned for our future. It wasn't easy, navigating the clash of dreams and realities, but we were committed. We agreed to take things slow, to focus on building us, before diving into any lavish plans. Living with Alex in my house started off as a dream. But dreams can get complicated fast, especially when they start messing with reality. Alex settled in quicker than I thought possible, acting like he owned the place. He'd walk around, making plans about changing furniture and fixing up rooms as if it were his personal project. One evening, he dropped a bombshell that caught me completely off guard. Emma, we need to talk, Alex began, his tone serious, a stark contrast to his usual easygoing self. I paused, sensing the gravity in his voice. Okay, what's up? I asked, trying to keep my voice light. He took a deep breath then let it out, slowly. I've been thinking, about us, about how people see us. I know what it looks like, me moving into your place, all this. He gestured around, encompassing the luxury of the house in one sweeping motion. I frowned, not liking where this was heading. What about it? I asked, a defensive edge, creeping into my voice. It's just, I don't want anyone thinking I'm with you for the money, for the house, it makes me feel like a total jerk, he admitted, looking down at his hands. I softened, understanding his concern, but unsure of the solution. Alex, you know that's not true. Why does it matter what anyone else thinks? Because it does, Emma. To me, it does, he shot back, frustration, lacing his words. 
I need to know that you trust me, really trust me. And I do, Alex, but what are you getting at? I pressed, a sense of unease growing in my stomach. He looked up, his eyes meeting mine with a resolve I hadn't seen before. I want us to sign a prenup. I'll give up any claim to your property, your money. I don't want a penny if, if things don't work out. The suggestion took me aback. A prenup? I echoed, the idea swirling in my head. Yeah, a prenup. But there's more, he continued, hesitating before plunging ahead. I also think. I think you should give me half of the house. Before the wedding. So I can feel like it's really our home, not just me living in your shadow. The request hit me like a ton of bricks. Give you half of the house? Alex, are you serious? I asked, my voice rising in disbelief. He nodded, earnestly. Yes, I'm serious. It's the only way I'll feel like I'm not just some charity case you're taking care of. I need to feel like an equal in this relationship. The conversation spiraled from there, his words echoing in my head long after we'd stopped talking. The idea of giving Alex the house, of proving my trust in such a tangible, irreversible way, felt daunting. Yet, his plea tugged at my heartstrings. He was convincing, passionate even, about making this work, about us being equals. In a moment of emotional turmoil, I agreed. Okay, Alex. If it means that much to you, we'll do it your way. I said, the words tasting like ash in my mouth. Walking out of Mr. Thompson's office, I was still in a daze from what we'd just done. The paperwork, the formalities, it all felt surreal. But the cold slap of reality came faster than I could have imagined. So, Emma, Alex started, his tone light but with an edge that immediately put me on alert. Now that we're partners in this, how about we talk terms? I blinked, confused. Terms? What do you mean? He stopped walking, turning to face me with a smirk that didn't reach his eyes. Well, you see, I've been thinking. This place, our home, it's worth a pretty penny, right? About seven million dollars, if I'm not mistaken. I felt a chill run down my spine. Yeah, so? I asked, trying to keep my voice steady. So, I figure my half is worth about $3.5 million. And I think it's only fair if you buy me out, he said, the words casual, as if he were discussing the weather. My heart stopped. Buy you out? Alex, what are you talking about? This was supposed to be our home, not an investment. He laughed, a sound that made my stomach turn. Our home? Please, Emma, don't be so naive. I saw an opportunity, and I took it. You can't blame me for playing it smart. I could feel the tears welling up, betrayal mixing with disbelief. But, you said you loved me. That this was about us starting a life together. Love? He scoffed, shaking his head. This was about securing my future, and thanks to you, it's looking pretty bright. I was reeling, each word a blow to my heart. How could you do this to me? Alex waved the property documents in front of my face, his smile cruel. Because, Emma, you made it so easy. I mean, who signs over half their house to someone without a second thought? You really are a fool. The words cut deeper than any knife. I stood there, frozen, as he continued to mock me, laughter echoing off the walls of the world we had built together, a world that was crumbling around me. You'll regret this. I finally managed to say, my voice a whisper. He stopped laughing, his gaze cold and calculating. I doubt it. But hey, if you want to keep living in your precious house, you know what it'll cost you. With that, he walked away, leaving me alone with the ruins of my trust and love. In that moment, I knew I had made a monumental mistake, one that would change the course of my life forever. But as the initial shock faded, replaced by a burning anger and determination, I vowed to fight back. Alex may have thought he won, but this was far from over. Walking back into Mr. Thompson's office felt like stepping into a safe haven after being out in a storm. The look on his face told me he'd been expecting this mess from the get-go. Mr. Thompson, I've messed up big time, I blurted out, barely able to keep my composure. 
He gestured for me to sit, his demeanor calm and collected. Tell me everything, Emma. And so, I did. Every sordid detail spilled out, my voice shaky but determined. When I finished, Mr. Thompson didn't seem surprised. Instead, he looked thoughtful, almost as if he'd anticipated this all along. Emma, there's something you should know about your father's will. He began, his tone serious. He made it clear that the house would be yours, fully and completely, but only after you're married. Since that hasn't happened, legally, the transaction you made with Alex holds no water. I sat there, stunned, as his words sunk in. So, you're saying, the house is still mine? Alex has no claim to it? Exactly. Mr. Thompson confirmed, a slight smile on his face. Your father was a wise man. He protected you, even from beyond. Relief washed over me, followed by a surge of righteous anger. I want to make Alex regret ever trying this. Is there anything we can do? Mr. Thompson leaned back in his chair, tapping a pen against his chin. Well, there's the matter of taxes. If he were the legal owner, he'd be responsible for a hefty sum in property and land taxes. Not to mention, there are restrictions on selling or transferring his share within three years of acquisition. A plan began to form in my mind, and with Mr. Thompson's guidance, I knew exactly what to do. I didn't waste any time. Picking up my phone, I dialed Alex, my heart pounding with a mix of nervousness and exhilaration. Alex, we need to talk about the house, I said, my voice steady. He sounded cautious, but smug. What about it, Emma? I took a deep breath and launched into my spiel. According to the law, you're now on the hook for a massive amount in property taxes. And let's not forget the land tax. Oh, and you can't sell or even give away your share for three years. So, good luck with that. There was silence on the other end, and I could almost hear the gears in his brain grinding to a halt. This is some kind of joke, right? Alex finally managed, his voice a mixture of disbelief and panic. No joke, Alex. You wanted the house, you got it, along with all its obligations. Enjoy dealing with the IRS, I said, a hint of satisfaction, creeping into my voice. Hanging up the phone, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. It wasn't just about the house or the money. It was about standing up for myself, about not letting someone's greed and manipulation dictate my life. Mr. Thompson smiled, approvingly. Well done, Emma. Your father would be proud. That evening, just as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the front yard, Alex showed up at my door, a look of desperation plastered across his face. The air between us was thick with tension, the kind that makes your skin crawl. Emma, listen, I, I'm sorry, he stammered, avoiding eye contact. I think you got it all wrong. About the house, the taxes. I need help. I couldn't help but let out a laugh, not because anything was funny, but because of the audacity. The nerve of him, showing up like this after everything. Sorry? You think a simple, sorry is going to cut it after what you pulled? He shuffled uncomfortably, his eyes darting around, looking for any sign of sympathy. I just, the taxes, Emma. They're going to bury me. You know I can't afford them. Standing there, watching him squirm, a sense of empowerment washed over me. I reached into my pocket, pulling out the documents, the very ones that could have sealed my fate to his. You want to know about taxes? Let me show you something. With a dramatic flourish, I tore the documents into shreds, letting the pieces flutter to the ground like the first snow of winter. There. Consider yourself saved from the taxes. This deal? It was never valid. We're not married, Alex. You never had a claim to my house. My dad made sure of that. You're free to go, free from any taxes this house might have saddled you with. The look on his face was priceless, a mix of confusion, relief, and something else, defeat, maybe. He was speechless, his mouth opening and closing, like a fish out of water. But, Emma, I... He started, but I wasn't having any of it. No buts, Alex. It's over. And just to be clear, 
I said, stepping closer, my voice low but fierce. If I see you around here again, I'm calling the cops. Got it? He nodded, a defeated slump to his shoulders, then turned and walked away, his steps heavy with the weight of his failed scheme. Watching him go, I felt a chapter of my life closing, one I was all too happy to end. As I gathered his belongings, dumping them unceremoniously on the curb, a promise to myself took shape in my mind. Never again would I let myself be so blinded by love or anything else that I ignore the glaring warning signs. I had learned my lesson, a costly one, but one that would guide my steps moving forward.